Hey, yo, Nelson, brother. We were just How talking. are you going? We're going good. <laughs> I wasn't sure I remember what you looked like. I kind of expected you to come on with a beard and, uh, you know, no hair on top. But uh, I, I, it's the I, same, really. I forgot what you sounded like, too. Yeah. You, you still it's have an accent. It's been too long. It has been too long. So Nelson heard the, uh, the story we told on the podcast a couple weeks ago about uh, my daughter, Rachel, meeting the guy from Brazil and falling in love with him and his hot, sexy tan <laughs> and the fact that he was a martial arts instructor and then... He texted her the next day and said that, ah, I'm actually just an insurance agent. I'm divorced. I'm 34, not 24, and uh, I, I'm not really from Brazil. Nelson sent me an email this weekend saying, I, I, I guess now I should tell you, I really, I'm from Scottsdale. This is a fake accent. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm breaking up with you, Nelson. I said in that email, you probably only like me because of my accent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the accent. And maybe the pancakes. Yeah, the pancakes. Hey, found a place here in Phoenix with good pancakes that I uh, I can't wait for you to get here because I want to take you there and get your thoughts on it. I think they're the best. Uh, they're the closest to pancakes on the rocks in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, really? Yeah. What was the name of the place, Tim? You it's care to give it a plug? Joe's Diner. Joe's Diner. 16th Street in Campbell. Okay, I know where that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you oh, just well, map quest. Uh what's that? Oh yeah, you are. You're kind of a local. Uh Shell sent an email this weekend saying only fifty sleeps until you guys show up on our shores. Sleeps. It's unbel- and you know what the funny thing is that the kids are right into it now and already Amy's threatening Max with well, Ava and I won't play with you. Oh. And I'm saying, you haven't even met Ava yet. She's not part of your posse yet, girlfriend. It and seems. Ava's going, I just know we're going to be best friends. Yeah. It seems like they've known each other forever. Yeah. I know. Hey, what is the, uh, what's their level of excitement about? Is it coming to America? Is it going to Disneyland? What, what's their perspective on the whole trip? I think um, Max definitely wants to see you again. He quite often talks about, I just want to see Tim again. I just want to talk to Tim. And Amy sort of, because she calls you toast. Yeah. They, they kind of, they desperately want to see you and, and Willie again and yeah. play with um, Ava and Hawkins. And I think, and it, 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 Disneyland's pretty big on it. Um, they keep talking about that, but it's more about the people and just hanging out. Oh, the, that's cool. The, and the, the trick or treating. Yeah, oh, yeah, and, and they, they spend hours on the internet looking for the right Halloween costume, and they keep saying, "I want that one for sure." And then they go to the next one. I want this one. So Aww. I think they're just really looking forward to Halloween and, and meeting the people and and the ride. I think it's just so much for them to to take in. It's hard to sort of know what they're looking forward to the most. Well, you know, as you're an adult, you have that uh, preconceived notion about what things are going to be like, and So often in life, things don't meet up to your expectations. Disneyland is one of the places you said was better than you expected, right, when you first went? I I went with Rebecca, my sister, and I went. I wasn't all that keen. I thought Disneyland's for kids. I'm not big on the rides. And I thought she wanted to go, so I thought, look, we'll go. And I showed you the video of her dancing with the characters on the main street. And that was the place that you walk in there, and as cool as you want to be, you're five years old the moment you get through the turnstile. That's right. True. And I think... I'm looking forward to this trip probably more than any of the others, because, although when I surprised you with the gorilla masks, that was pretty good. That was good. But, but this time, because I'm not doing anything, I'm not really going anywhere in particular, I'm just there to sit back and watch the kids enjoy America and to meet the people that I meet and to sort of absorb it and go, you know, to be at that age, to experience that is just going to be unbelievable for them. Yeah. And because there's no timetable, there's no deadlines to do anything, we can just sit back and say, kids, what do you want to do today? And... As a dad, that's one of the best things I think you can do for your mm. kids is just be there for them in the moment and not say, hey, we've got to rush to here or there or right. run by dad's timetable. You can just be your own you know, kid and because I want to be a kid too, really. Hey, how are the kids sleeping at night? I mean, is, is this kind of thing keeping them awake? Not really, but I tell you, it's great bargaining power. Everything is, well, you're not going to America if you don't brush your teeth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can't follow through with that. No, but th- well, they don't know that yet. The problem is once we've been and we come back, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. we got to hey, go to the moon. You don't brush your teeth. I'm sending you to <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> hey, Nels, there's a study in uh, just came out here in uh, the States that said people are more afraid to go to Mexico now than they are the Middle East. There's a, you know, there's a lot of people, it's funny, it's kind of split down the middle. A lot of people say to us, oh, you're going to the States, you're going to go to Mexico. And half the people say, make sure you don't go to mm-hmm. Mexico. And the other half say, make sure you do go. Mm-hmm. And I kind of go, not, not, not big. it's not really on my list of things to see Mexico. So yeah. half yeah, the yeah, people you hang... Andrea. You can, you can pretty much tell which half of the people have been there recently and which half have been there 30 years ago. 
Yeah, I was there uh, earlier this summer. Look what happened. I got this big uh, black <laughs> fingernail. So I don't recommend <laughs> hey, it. Hey, watch it. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've got to tell you, have you seen the British study that came out that said how much weight the British average British tourist puts on in two weeks visiting America? No. Oh, no. Have a guess. Uh, uh, 20 uh, pounds. 15? In two weeks? Yeah. yeah. No, it's eight pounds. Eight pounds. Mm. Huh. Now, is that pounds, pounds, or is that uh, British currency? <laughs> Let me just tell you, though. Because I, I went to London, and I lost a lot of pounds. Because <laughs> London's food is horrible. Yeah, but expensive. when I went to Australia, I gained eight pounds in That's just two weeks. Ask you, you guys, I, think it's, I don't reckon it really matters where you go. Like, if you're on holidays, you're going to eat you out eat. a lot more, and it's, you're going to let yourself go a little bit because you just... You know, like some people that ran up and down stairs in the hotel room. Well, well right. I, I just wonder how much weight I would have gained if we hadn't walked everywhere. Because in Australia, we walk just about every place. True. Yeah, you went I, on a walkabout. Yeah, I think I'd put on like five pounds. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, but you got to, you're on holidays. Right. Yeah. yeah, we drank a lot of beer. A lot of Nelson's blood. <laughs> so, how look, I have to admit, I've only listened to maybe two podcasts because I told you before, when I'm listening to the podcast now for some reason with my new computer, it knocks Michelle out of her work computer. <laughs> so I can't listen to the podcast while she's working. Hmm. And she's working all the time on the computer. So I only get to listen to it every now and then. I've got to get up really early. So I haven't really heard much of what's happening in... Phoenix Town, except it's pretty hot, I imagine. Yeah, it's been a hot yeah. spike to the uh, end of the summer here. Uh, the second hottest summer on record since they've been keeping track. And kids are back in school, and the Diamondbacks are uh, doing really well. Everybody's excited about that. Anything else going on? Woo-hoo. Not so much, right? No. Yeah. Kind of boring. Yeah, we haven't heard much Ameri- There's not much American news making news in Australia at the moment. Now that like Obama's got that bill through, they were talking about that every day. It was you know top news. But apart from that, we don't hear much about America at the moment. Hey, that's good, I think, right? Yeah, I suppose, no news is yeah, good I news. it's good. Well, uh, and, and this Thursday is the kickoff to the NFL season, the American football. And um, uh, Obama wanted to uh, talk, give a big speech on how he's going to create a bunch of jobs on Wednesday night. But that's the night of a big Republican debate. So they convinced him to move it to the next night, which is the kickoff of the football season. So the poor guy, he can't get any airtime. Can't catch a break. Yeah. Are people listening to him still? No, not, not really. Not really. No, not so much. In fact, they've proven that uh, his TV ratings are down. Yeah. Is, Anytime uh, he's on TV that people aren't watching. His, That's uh, what happens to our, our prime minister. I think you could almost graph it out in their line ball. Like now our prime minister is so despised that people aren't even listening now. It's gone past anger and they're just going, you know what, it doesn't matter what she says, it's right. over for them. It's ambivalence is worse than uh, hatred, I think. Yeah. Uh, his uh, approval rating is, uh, or disapproval rating is over 60% now, whatever, however they... So let's keep that. it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's, she's at the moment, she's the lowest, um, she has the lowest approval rating since polls began in Australia. Wow. Man. Interesting. So, yeah. and, uh, and then this uh, Sunday, of course, will be the 10th anniversary of uh, 9-11. Yeah. They're going to uh, open a uh, a big memorial at the site of the Twin Towers. I just saw a shot of the Twin Towers, the the new buildings that are going up there. They're pretty far along. It's pretty impressive. When is this well, supposed to be done? It's going pretty quick, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it really has. Um, 2014? 2014, yeah. all of the towers will be uh, completed. Up, completed. They're, it kicks off this Sunday. They're going to have the memorial garden opened up and then uh, the associated uh, parts of the, the rebuilding project. Um yeah, there's been a lot of specials about that here. Are they, they talking much about it there? Yeah, it, it's made a fair bit of news. I think if you look at it, I don't think in our lifetime, I don't think there's been an event that is that the whole world has captured everyone's imagination. I think you probably have to go back to 69 when the, the moon landing. They say it's something that everyone went, they know exactly where, where they were at one time. Mm-hmm. And I think up until then, terrorism was always, I'd say, despised. And people said, yeah, look, you know, that's horrible what they do. But it was never really anywhere where people cared that much. And it never made such big news. And, exactly. you know, if you're a publicist for terrorists, what they did on 9-11 was the worst possible thing they could have done, for, even from their point of view. Because people that probably didn't really care much about it because it didn't affect them, all of a sudden the whole world turns on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And says, you know, that was so wrong. Nelson, where were you when you found out about 9-11? Well, in Australia, it happened at about 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting up, I got up about 4.30 or 5 o'clock and in the morning and they were talking about it on the radio and I was listening to it as I was getting ready for work and I'm, it, it sort of wasn't making a lot of sense. But I, so I remember waking Michelle up and saying, you're not gonna, you've got to listen to this, this is big news. And we turned the TV on, I think like everyone in the world did. And you know what, it just, it just shocked us. Yeah. 
it was just, and even to this day, when you think about it, you go the images that, and, and where, how you felt and where you were at the time. You know, I remember standing in the bathroom, just getting out of the shower, listening on the headphones, and going, "This is bad." Yeah, we. Uh, I was I was looking for uh, the the tape of our show because it unfolded as we were watching it live. We were on the air live, and I, I still am. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm moved in an odd way by people who say they heard about it from us because. It was such a, a, a personal thing that uh, we were going through as, as we watched it. Uh, we were about to go on Channel 3, and literally, as they were as Tara was introducing us, they mm-hmm. cut to, oh, I'm sorry, we can't go to Tim and Willie now. We have to. We have breaking news from New York. And we saw, you know, at about 10 till 6 our time, the, the first tower on fire and that a plane had hit it. And, and so we didn't do the TV hit. We went back on the radio. We, we talked about it, and listeners were calling in. No, it was a small plane. No, it couldn't have been an airliner. And at about whatever it was, eight after the top of the hour, as we were about to go to traffic, I heard our traffic guy say out loud, oh, my God, a second plane. And it's so weird because in so many ways there, there are terrorist attacks and, and there are malicious acts like that that it takes a while for the credit to be dished out, you know, for us to really know what the score is. In that moment, the entire mm-hmm. world knew exactly what the score was. There was no doubt about it. And it, and it was exactly what it was. And, and I've never been so shocked. You know, the, the events that unfolded after that, you know, are, are, are a whole different uh, topic for one of our podcasts this week. But, uh, God, it was I just... The, the importance is, and I think I sent you an email at the time, because I remember all the news were full of it, but we were trying to, we could listen to you back in the days when technology was much more advanced. We could listen to you guys live on the internet. <laughs> and, the internet? Is that still and, around? Yeah, and I think in those sort of times, you go back to the people that you know, and I don't want to see some stiff in a suit telling me what happened. I want to hear from people that talk like I talk, Yeah. except for the stupid accents. And like, I think a lot of people that, you know, that would actually would listen in to you guys to go, hey, tell us what happened and just break it down in the normal speak for us without all the crap, you know? And the job you guys did, you know, was outstanding. I think a lot of people took a lot of um, heart from that. Mm. There's, a, uh, there's a video on the web of a guy in Pennsylvania that, was got, that got some video footage after Flight 93 crashed. And just like you said, he's talking about it in his normal language, uh, and his accent, he kind of had a little bit of a kind of a hick accent. And he's saying, you know, a plane just crashed over there. I know they just crashed into the Twin Towers. I don't know what the heck it'd be doing crashing over there in that field. But anyway, a big plane just crashed over there. Big boom, explosion. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so you're just talking about hearing it from the normal guy. I don't know if he's normal. <laughs> yeah. the, just the accent was funny, I thought. <laughs> but it's true. True, because you know, that's, you know, it's almost like you guys are the, are the friends, and you want to hear it from your friends as to what happens. So you tune into the radio to hear, rather than hearing it from the, you know, the guy behind the, the desk with the suit and the tie, just so measured about the way they speak. And, I know. You know. Well, good on you. All right. Well, uh, anything else we need to get caught up on? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't think so. Everything's still still good. Shelley's still really good. <laughs> She's a smart woman. Yeah. She'll yes, never she leave is. me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, no, no. no. Think about it. If she leaves me, she only gets half. If she hangs around till I'm dead, she gets everything. Oh, man, that is... Uh, so she's a smart girl. As we say, that's right-hand check right there. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, I want to knock that down to 49 sleeps, so yep. I will say goodbye. All right, good on you, and we'll, uh, we'll talk with you soon, Nels. No worries. Catch up. Thanks for the All chat. Right. Love you, brother.